In 1984, a French boy, son to two Caribbean parents who lived in the suburbs of Paris, caught the eye of the local team's coach. He, despite his talent, was particularly not interested in football, and it would be his father who would convince him to start playing. Only five years later, as he kept going up the rankings, an AS Monaco scout would watch his team play and by the end of the match the score sheet read 6-0 with one name standing out as it had been written all six times. Thierry Henry. At the time, Monaco only accepted young players as long as they had good grades and were willing to take trials first, but Henri, despite not feeling that criteria, was so talented that they would allow him to join either way. At just 17, he would debut for the main team, and in his first season, despite only playing to 179 minutes, he would score three times. The second season, he would start getting more playing time but still only coming in as a sub, and playing on the wing. Regardless, he would impress, and as he started the next season on his best form yet, by mid-November he would average a goal every 91 minutes, and despite going on a dry streak for a few weeks, by the end of the calendar year, he would win the award for the best French young player of the year. For the rest of the season, he would keep playing at a high level, and would help AS Monaco win the French league. But the 1997-1998 season would be the one where he would truly cement himself as a generational talent. While during the season his goal-scoring ability would not offer very impressive results domestically, it would be amazing in a Champions League, scoring six times in a group stage. As they went into the quarterfinals, they would slightly edge Manchester United, despite Henri not playing the full 90 on either of the two legs, which would be the case once again in his first leg of the semi-finals, as they lost 4-1 to Juventus. In the second leg, Henry would play the full 90 and despite him managing to score his 7th Champions League goal of the season, the most scored by a French player since the renaming of the competition, and averaging a goal every 81 minutes, AS Monaco would not make it to the final. His performances would be so significant that he would manage to get called up for the 1998 World Cup. He would play the full 90 in the first match against South Africa and manage to score, but in the second match he would shine even brighter, scoring twice against Saudi Arabia despite not even playing the full match. Despite the great start, he would not play a single full match for the remainder of the tournament and would end up not being utilized in the final against Brazil. Regardless, France would win and he would add the World Cup to his trophy cabinet. This tournament would only help to earn him even more notoriety at international level and after half a season with Monaco he would get sold to Juventus for 12.5 million euros. As Henri in his first three months at the club, the doubts over him became even more severe. But then the barrier was broken and Henri started scoring and with 12 goals over the next 18 matches it seemed like he did indeed justify his own fee. But then something incredible happened, Henri would score in 10 consecutive matches with 12 goals, averaging a goal every 60 minutes, truly world class. This streak would massively influence Arsenal's performance in the Europa League with Henri scoring in all 6 games that preceded the final. Unfortunately there he wouldn't be able to help them any further and Arsenal would lose the final on penalties. With his rising notoriety, Henri would be called to play for the national team in the Euro 2000. Once again, he would come off to a great start, scoring in the first two matches, then he would be rested, coming back in the quarterfinals where we would have a quiet game against Spain. In the semi-finals though, he would be the hero as he would score the equalizer that prevented France from being knocked out by Portugal and make it to the final. The final would be another quiet match where his teammates would step up and Henri would win his second international trophy, once again as the top scorer of the team. His second season at Arsenal would be more stable, though it would have a similar outcome with Arsenal once again finishing second place in the league and losing out in the final of the FA Cup. Henri was desperate to get his hands on some silverware and the next season would come to fulfill his wish as Arsenal would finish top of the Premier League and would even earn the double as they defeated Chelsea 2-0 in the final, though Henri would once again seem distant. This final came to show that Henri clearly had a lack of composure when it came to facing bigger teams, seemingly always disappearing in the finals and only scoring once during the Champions League knockout stage despite managing 6 goals in 7 matches during the group stage. The next season, despite failing to retain the Premier League title, he would manage an incredible tally of 55 goals and assists in 55 matches. That would allow him to reach the final of the FA Cup once again, where this time he would silence his critics, as despite not scoring, he would earn the Man of the Match award. Still, as the final was played against Southampton, many claimed it wasn't a proper final and that he still had to prove himself against bigger teams. Regardless of what his critics might have said, FIFA certainly believed in Henri as he would finish the season as runner-up in the FIFA World Player of the Year award. 
the next season would represent what many consider his peak, as he would be essential to Arsenal in their quest to becoming the first ever team to win the Premier League without conceding a single defeat, as he would score 30 goals which would be the all-time record and provide 9 assists throughout the 37 league matches he would play. But once again, critics would rejoice as their opinions seem to be reinforced by Henri's performances, with him failing to score in 3 out of the 4 knockout stage matches of the Champions League, only scoring against Celta de Vigo, and failing to score in the semi-finals of the FA Cup against Chelsea. Still that season, he would net a hat-trick against Liverpool, which was a good way to clap back. Still, this season would see him renew his spot as the runner-up to the FIFA Player of the Year award and win the European Golden Boot for the first time. The 2004-2005 season would be one of his most underwhelming, with no trophies coming his way despite Henri finishing as the league top scorer. The following season, though, would be much different. Henri would have his least clutch season only once scoring against the top four, despite being the league's top scorer. In the Champions League, it would be even more underwhelming, scoring only twice during the knockout stages, despite Arsenal making it to the final, where Henri would once more disappoint as they lost out to Barcelona. Over the summer, he would take part in the 2006 World World Cup, where despite ending up being nominated as one of the best players of the tournament, he would only score once over the knockout stage, where he wouldn't play a single full match. Sadly, despite making it to the final, France would lose to Italy on penalties. After a last season at Arsenal completely destroyed by injuries, Henri would finally move away on a 24 million euro deal that would see him join Barcelona. As Henri left, the Gunners would have somewhat of a renaissance, with the legend himself clarifying that he believed his seniority at the club was hindering their style of play. Sort of shocking to hear, to be honest. At Barcelona, he would never achieve the status he had at Arsenal, managing just 19 goals in his first season, getting to the point of him claiming to be missing home. The second season there would be the best by far, as Barcelona would take home 6 trophies, winning the Copa del Rey, La Liga, both Super Cups and of course the Champions League and the Club World Cup, as Henri managed 26 goals in all competitions. As a recurring theme of his career was his inability to show up in big games, you're probably wondering how he did in his only victorious run in the Champions League, and well, to the surprise of no one at this point, he only scored one goal after the last 16 round. After seemingly being replaced by Pedro Rodriguez in his third season, he would leave to the MLS to play for the New York Red Bulls, where he would never register more than 15 goals in a season, with his most notable moment being a month and a half loan back to Arsenal, where he would play 7 matches and manage 2 goals, as he cemented himself as the club's all-time top scorer. Henri was an icon. He formed incredible partnerships, first with Bergkamp, then Samuel Eto'o, one of my favorite players from when I was younger. I would pick that Barcelona team every time. The way he would drift from side to side, completely bamboozling defenders, he was just phenomenal, no matter how intense his critics have been. Now, getting into our ranking system. First, we will judge him by his finishing. He was deadly as they get with his right foot, but lacking in heading ability as well as set pieces, long range and weak foot finishing, he can only get an 8. Secondly, we will judge him on his positioning. Much like Del Piero, he wasn't that type of a striker. He gets a 7 out of 10. For speed and physicality, he gets a 7 out of 10, as he was pretty fast but not the strongest player at all. The fourth technical attribute to be taken into account is his first touch and ball control, which were superb. Some of the finest ever seen on a striker, he gets a 10 out of 10. Finally, mentality. As I covered in the video, we tended to not show up on big games, which is close to the most important trait a striker must have, so he can only get a 5 out of 10. When it comes to his legacy, first consistency, he played wonderfully in France and England, later dipping a bit in form while in Spain, and once again it has to be noted that he failed regularly to show up in any international tournament, especially on the late stages, so he can only get a 6 out of 10. Secondly, Flair, it's Thierry Henry, if you don't understand why he gets a 9 out of 10, you should rewind. Then, his trophy cabinets. He was very lucky to have a great squad with the French national team, as well as the Invincibles and even being part of the Tiki Taka, so not surprisingly at all, his trophy cabinet is nearly immaculate. Just lacking some individual awards, a 9 out of 10. The fourth of these aspects is longevity, which was pretty good, though he had some shaky moments at Juve and Barcelona, he gets an 8 out of 10. Lastly, the icon factor. His name is one of the most unforgettable to come out of the 2000s, especially in England, he gets a 9 out of 10. 
that adds up to 78 out of 100, placing him right under Ronaldinho and Kaká, who are both two amazing players who had one specific aspect of their game in their, their careers, so I believe it makes sense. This was Thierry Henry's career in a video, I hope you enjoyed, if you did please leave a like, it really means so much to me when people like the video. Um, if you're new, subscribe, there's a new video like this every week. And yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye.